talk. Keith from Food Not Bombs is going to talk a little bit. Then we're going to hear uh, from Irene from the Resource Center for Nonviolence. And then I'm going to say a little word. And then we're going to start marching probably around 140, somewhere in there. So, uh, without further ado, thank you, first of all, for everyone that's come so far. This is a beautiful turnout. Uh, it is exactly what we want. Representation, getting your voice heard. Look at all these wonderful signs and beautiful faces. It's great. So let me pass this off to Keith from Food Not Bombs. He's the one that provided this wonderful table of food. If you haven't had a chance to, come over here and eat some free bagels and pastries and deliciousness. But without further ado, here's Keith from Food Not Bombs. Yay! Wow, it's great to see everybody out here. And as you know, people are all over the world are out today protesting uh, police violence and militarism. And uh, you may have heard that the uh, city council on Tuesday voted to uh, accept the quarter million dollar Bearcat uh, armored vehicle for the police department. And this is in the face of getting uh, um, license plate uh, reader cameras two times without public comment really and who knows what other militaristic things that the local police department is acquiring and why are they acquiring these things are they worried about large peaceful gatherings like this possibly so and um so I, I was involved in a group that started uh, an organization or coalition called October 22nd No Police Brutality Day. And that was back after the Simi Valley verdict in the Rodney King case. That was one of the earliest videotaped uh, um, incidents that went viral. That's even right at the beginning of, uh, of the internet. And it inspired people to rise up all over the United States, just as we're seeing today. And uh, so this is a long movement, and it's really important to keep going out and out and out and not give up. And so it's really exciting that people are here. And so we're going to have also, there's a number of other protests coming up. People are handing out information about it. And uh, because of the militarization of the city by city council, um, and particularly by the purchase of this uh, Bearcat, which they jammed down the throats of the community without really any oversight, with no discussion. Uh, we learned about it on the day of the vote. And then they uh, forced us out of city, uh, city Hall as a result of our objecting to their ramming this down our throats. And so we're going back on January 13th at 3 o'clock. That's a Tuesday. And we have information at the Food Not Bombs table about it. And we really hope to see you there and keep up the struggle. Don't give up. Continue to support all the actions that are uh, organizing in support of uh, uh, ending the criminalization of poor people, the racist attacks against those in our community. I'm sure we, many of us have seen those attacks our own selves on people in this town. And also to, uh, to organize to uh, end the, this whole basic fascist direction that the city and the country and the world is going. So thank you. Yeah. Woo! All right, that was wonderful. Thank you, Keith. So next, we have Irene O'Connell. She is the representative from the Resource Center for Nonviolence. She is also one of the lead coordinators of this protest slash demonstration slash rally slash discussion forum. So we should all give her a big round of applause and say thank you. this situation we're just responding to it the best we can so my name is Irene I'm the representative of the resource center for nonviolence so I want to say thank you to everyone for your commitment for being here I, you, yeah. uh, marching in solidarity with families who have lost their lives or lost many by the hands of state-sponsored violence we are in a time of rawness and mourning right now so I want to ask that everyone respect that I would also like to state a disclaimer about nonviolence because many of you may not know what that means. And I want to claim that I don't claim to be an expert on nonviolence and I don't claim to be a nonviolent person. But for me, nonviolent means to, uh, a commitment to revealing and examining the violence within me and around me with the hope that a force more powerful will come to eradicate that violence. With this preface, I want to say that I honor that this is a time of outrage. I want to honor the rage of a societal structure that not only allows state-sponsored violence, but thrives on it. I want to invite all of us to put our heads together 
together to use this rightful indignation, this rage, to creatively transform this into constructive solutions. Today we march peacefully. Today to remind ourselves that we do not need to hide behind the fear and insecurity of violence and weapons. We are, we are the force more powerful. We are the force that is recognizing a system that devalues a human life because it does not own property or doesn't even have the right amount of melanin in its skin. This is not what we want. So I am grateful to everyone here today, and I ask everyone to remind ourselves that to look at, into ourselves. How are we responding or participating in violence? How are we encouraging our family members, our friends, our co-workers? If we don't participate in these violent structures, then it has no more legs to stand on. Okay. One of MLK's principles of nonviolent states that we must attack the forces of evil, not the individual carrying out that evil. So I say this for all of us to be mindful that of our words and our attitudes towards police officers in our community and those who support them. Those individuals are operating under a system that demands that they uphold the status quo, and that is what we're attacking. I want us to be mindful of the privilege and power that we carry in our own bodies, the space we're taking up with our voices, the narratives that we're engaging in. Please be mindful of your privilege. Please be mindful of the ways we participate in these structures. And thank you again. The struggle is real. Keep committing to it and organize. Thank you. So next, before we start going, uh, we're going to listen to Simba Kenyatta. He is the uh, coming in president of the NAACP. Hello, folks. I'm so glad you're here. First, I would like us to have just a few moments of silence for those black men that are being killed. So just a little while and let it soak into your head what we're doing here, why we're here, and why we have them keep coming here. So just a few minutes, please. Just a few seconds. Speak up. I guess um, the next thing is that I'm going to get about as close as I do to prayer with you guys because I usually end up my speeches with this and I'm going to start it off this time. I want you all to remember that this is all an illusion. Stars, dolphins, people, we're all the same thing. There is only one thing. Amen. And I want you all to remember that as we go through this. There is only one thing. Everything else is an illusion. It's atoms are mostly space. You are mostly space. So remember, we are the same thing. Oh. And I would also like to thank Trayvon Martin, Eric Garner, uh, Tamir. I would like to thank them because without them, we would not be here today dealing with what we're dealing with. So I have to thank them for giving their life so that we can do something different in our society. So, I thank you very much. Get about Mike Brown. Mike Brown. Sorry, say you can't hear me. I have never, ever had that problem before not being heard. So, I'll speak a little louder, a little bit. Remember Mike uh, Brown. That's what I said. Remember Mike Brown. And Mike Brown, thank you. I was, couldn't remember all the names because there's so many black men that are being killed by police. They're all floating around in my head. Um, I'm a former member of the Black Panther Party for Self Defense. And if you check out, if you look out and check out what's going on right now, you can see why we started the Black Panther Party for Self Defense. And I always remember to say self defense at the end because people kind of forget that part. We didn't arm ourselves just so we could go out and kill people, we armed ourselves to protect ourselves. Yeah. Um, One thing I have a problem with is my voice. Because I have, and other black men I've talked to, have a habit of our voices going up higher 
than it normally is because my speaking voice is down here. But when I speak to police and stuff, my voice is up here because police get intimidated by black men being totally in themselves and with their own power. I'm not the only one that's gone through this. I talk to a bunch of other black men and say, yeah, my voice goes up when I talk to cops because when it's down, they freak out for no reason. And this is getting old, folks. I've been doing this shit since I was 15, 16 years old. This is getting really old. How many times do we have to do this? How many days and weeks and months do we have to suffer and deal with these people that don't give a damn about us? And I, being a black ex black Panther, I am not into violence as much as people might think we were. We're not into violence, we're into self-defense. However, like Irene said, I am not a non-violent person. However, on this march, there will be no violence. And if there is some, we will deal with you immediately. Hope you understand that. This is not to be somebody's playground for violence. While I'm doing this, I noticed that something that African American people have been talking about for a while, and that white people have a really hard time staying focused on black people's problems. Have a really bad problem dealing with the black folks' problems. They can't focus. And a lot of times we go through talking about black people, we end up talking about whales, we end up talking about all kinds of homeless things, we end up talking about stuff that doesn't relate to African American men being shot. I want this to be in your head. We're not marching for feminism, even though I love feminism. We're not marching for ecology, even though I love the ecology movement. We are marching because African American men keep being killed by police. I've been shot at. I am tired of police dealing with me the way they deal with me. We don't have to keep taking this. And when we don't take it, shit happens. There's a young man that asked me to speak a little bit for him because he was arrested, asked for some help. They didn't give him any help. They strapped him to a chair. And I don't know if you know what that chair looks like, but it looks like an electric chair. His wrists are strapped down. His legs are strapped down. He's got straps across his chest. This is in the Santa Cruz County Jail. This goes on. This isn't our imagination. People would like to make us think, oh God, you guys are, just stop complaining. We're not complaining, we're demanding. I was we're trying to ask them for shit. County this county time, time they have to give breathe. up what we ask for. A citizen police review board that has some power, some power to subpoena, the power to pull people and ask them what happened as witnesses. We, all right, so we're trying our best to do what we need to do to make this town a little more equitable for everyone. Now they want to buy a fucking armored car, excuse my language, but they want to buy an armored car. Now what the hell do we need an armored car for in Santa Cruz? Yeah. We don't need an armored car in Santa Cruz. We don't need one at all. And we need to sit and press and make sure that they understand we do not want this here. And we will not have that here. We have to learn how to demand. Stop fucking asking excuse me. And stop asking for stuff. Stop begging for stuff. Start demanding stuff. We we deserve to demand what we want. Yes. This is wow. This is us. We're gonna take back Santa Cruz away different than the people that take back Santa Cruz are doing it. We're gonna take Santa Cruz back to where we deal with justice and peace for all of us. This is yes. really old folks. So I want you to dig down inside, pull that voice up that you never use, and direct it as far and as loud as you possibly can. Get this down inside you. I don't want this in your head. I want this in your heart. I don't speak to your mind. I'm speaking to your soul. This, what got you here was your soul and your love for each other. And that's what's going to carry us down the, uh, down the march. It's going to carry us through to get our justice that we deserve so much. So thank you very much. Like I said, keep this in your heart. And when you march and you, and you shout, make sure it's from the bottom of your gut. Just make sure that they feel it. Not just hear it. Make sure they feel us. Because we're tired of this. We don't need to be feeling this. this anger and sadness anymore. It's too old. We don't need it anymore. So when you go out here, do something. We're not just going to march after this. We're going to figure out some things to do to ameliorate some of the shit that they do to us. So this is not just a march. This is about us demanding what we need and what we want. And we have to do it. Stop being so 
knife. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. Much, y'all later.